It wasn't that long ago. In fact, it feels just like yesterday. Nikki was tired of being told what she could and couldn't do. Sure, she excelled at taking photographs. It was her thing. She was designed for it, but she knew deep down she could do more. She had dreams of taking those individual frames and stringing them together into a motion picture. Nikki would go on to do just that, and you can too. Before there was a public affairs consolidation, there was gear consolidation. Manufacturers saw an opportunity to leverage the technology in their cameras to have them do more for a better price point. Technology that was once out of reach for independent producers was now within their grasp. The first camera to really do this well was the Canon 5D Mark II, but since then, Sony, Panasonic, and Nikon have seized the opportunity. And chances are, you have one of these cameras in your shop. Whether a DSLR or a mirrorless, there are pros and cons to shooting video with a camera designed primarily for photo. Let's break it down. This impeccably dressed party store professional football player will help illustrate our point. Size. These cameras are easy to carry and especially helpful when you have to one-man band it. Just don't forget your stabilizer. Look, I'm shooting video. Detachable lenses. This offers you more creative choices and flexibility in how you compose your shot. Most DSLRs can be adapted to use a wide range of lenses. Large sensors. Large sensors help you get that super sweet shallow depth of field. Now your viewers can concentrate on the primary point of focus in your story without distractions from your background. Just be sure you get that shot in focus. So cinematic. Now the cons. Party Store Convict is here to help illustrate these points. Audio. The biggest sacrifice you'll make when using a DSLR is sound. They usually have poor preamps, which can result in noise, and the maximum quality of the recording is less than that of a video camera. You'll be better off recording your interviews and other sounds on a device like this and syncing them in post. Limited codec. Many DSLRs record video using an 8-bit H.264 codec. It's a great codec for viewing because it's super compressed and can help keep video files small for uploading and viewing online. It's not great when you want to take footage into your editor and work on it. It can bog down slower machines, and the amount of information you have to push when color correcting is limited. Record time. Most of these cameras will only record 29 minutes per clip. That may seem like plenty, but if you are recording a change of command or interview, you could end up having your camera stop right when you need it most. I myself almost didn't even believe it. I, sure enough, at 0630, we walked out and we saw. There's just a few pros and cons for you to consider when using your DSLR or mirrorless for video. A nice watch. Hey, thanks. Uh, that's all, guys. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. If you are a photographer and you're about to start shooting video, that can seem like a tall order. But rest assured, skills you already possess, like composition and the use of natural light, are going to serve you well. There is one thing you're going to have to consider, though. Shutter speed is no longer a tool to control light. It's an artistic choice to help determine the fluidity of motion. High shutter speeds can make objects look deformed and unnatural, while slow shutter speeds can distort and ghost your subject's movements. This could be a cool effect, but if you want your motion to look natural, a quick rule of thumb is to keep your shutter speed double your frame rate. So let that DSLR or mirrorless wonder reach its dreams of being a video superstar. To learn more techniques about shooting video on DSLR, scour the web, check with your supervisor, and refer to your CDCs. Hey, um, that was my line. Are you serious? Yeah. You're not kidding? No. <sighs> Guess Nikki and I will be gone then. <laughs> <laughs>